your point was uh, poignant. I mean, it certainly sums up the urgency, I think, in trying to get these government programs right. But also, I think there's a big part of this that is communication and communication that this economy is coming back and people aren't going to be permanently out of work. Yeah, I think we need that a lot. Uh, we forget about the psychological aspects of this. Uh, economists are probably more guilty than most because we always talk in terms of numbers. But um, there's a lot of economic evidence that higher unemployment leads to more domestic violence, more alcoholism, more drug abuse, and more suicides. And um, there was a, another study. Uh, it's, it's not a perfect study, but it's good round numbers in it. Uh, by AP that found that 10% higher unemployment rate for a sustained period reduces life expectancy by a year and a half. Uh, that's an enormous, enormous reduction. Um, it leads to literally hundreds of thousands more deaths every year. So continuing the current lockdown for an extended period and damaging the economy means losing lives and not just losing money. But you're not one of those who says that we need to, you know, go back to work, so to speak, right? You're just saying we need to understand that shutting things down for a long period of time carries its own risks, including health and mortality risks. Uh, yes, and but I think we also um, need to realize that we can't do this for months and months and months. So I think that it would make sense to... Uh, use a, to begin, I'm stress that word, begin, a phased reopening of the economy on a common sense basis starting at the end of April. Uh, but people have already been in lockdown, depending on where you live, between two and four weeks. And that would be another four weeks on top of that. That's a long time to be cooped up and not in your usual, um, your usual lifestyle. Um, that doesn't mean everyone has to go back to work right away. I'm certainly not one who believes that. But um, just being able to do more things and you know, have relatively healthy people, um, the people who you know, don't have risk, high risk factors, be able to go back to work, I think would be important. And it would send an important psychological sim symbol. You know, one of the things I I'd love to see, for example, is to have the M NBA get back to playing. That would, A, give us something to watch, although I'm not particularly a basketball fan, but it would give us the sense that life can return to normal. They don't have to play in front of a big stadium, but, you know, they can play in a, in a high school gym if they, if they had to with TV cameras there. But things like that have to start to rehab, reopen and happen in order for us to feel life will be normal at some point. So you think, in other words, that we're reaching the point where the risk of reopening things, having those small group gatherings, sending people back to work is less great because maybe the health care systems can handle the strain. Maybe people are going to wear masks and be careful that they don't spread to you know, members, vulnerable members of the population. There will be some people who have to stay home. And I wonder about the example of China, where they've had a hard time in some cases convincing people to go back to work and the traffic uh, flow still looks anemic. I think that's right. I mean, uh, once burned, twice shy, and, and none of us are going to rush back to work. Um, and I think that's something that the people who want to keep a shutdown longer need to remember. We don't want it to become assumed and a habit for people to just, you know, not go back to work. It can be very hard to recover and very hard for those people who don't go back to work. And we've got another problem, Kelly, if I can just pivot to that. Mm -hmm. um, unfortunately, the unemployment insurance program that was passed actually pays people more to stay home not working than they got at their previous job. I've never heard of any government anywhere doing something so foolish. It's basically uh, incentivizing the economy to stay closed longer and keeping people home longer, even when things have gotten back to normal. It makes no sense, and that's going to be another hurdle we're going to have to overcome. My guess is a lot of this will continue to get changed because we've never had to, to try. I mean, you can go to the small business loans today that are going to be a work in progress and other things. I think the most important thing is, people, is for people to understand, if I act in good faith, will I be rewarded for that? In other words, if I'm a company and I'm trying to do the right thing, 
Well, is that laying people off because they can get more money right now, or is that keeping them on payroll because I'll get assistance, but I don't want to have to then keep them on forever because my demand might be down 30 percent in a year and I might not need the staff I once needed? I mean, it's tricky. I think it's very important uh, that uh, small businesses take advantage of this program. Um, we want them to keep their um, institutions and establishments running. It's a lot easier to you know, reopen a semi-closed or, uh, or low-volume establishment than open one from scratch. So we want to keep them there. And we particularly want to keep workers engaged to the extent possible, even if there's a lot of working from home, even if there's a lot of social distancing, and even if you're in there just part-time. I think it's important for people um, to continue to feel like they're participating in the economy. Great, great points. Larry, thanks. Uh, we always appreciate your time. Thank you very much, Kelly, for having me on. Larry Lindsay is CEO of the Lindsay Group.